Hey guys, so the last thing we're going to go over here is just a, a couple more tricks for you before we get into the good stuff. Uh, so here's just a few more tips. Earlier I had talked about when tiling textures that you need to have wrap mode turned on. So each time you switch to a new brush, wrap mode will be at zero again. And so remember, if you don't know where wrap mode is, you can go to brush at the top, the curve section here, and then you'll see wrap mode here. And this is how you tile your textures. We'll turn this to one. And every time you're gonna switch between your textures, so I'm on standard right now, and it's wrapping and tiling properly. Now if I switch to another brush like uh, Dame Standard, then wrap mode is set to zero again so it will not tile. So be careful if you're switching to different brushes that you always turn wrap mode on. Otherwise you're gonna end up with sections that don't tile properly like this and that'll be bad. So remember, always remember, Okay, let's turn wrap mode on for Dame Standard here then. We'll just make like a really simple crack texture. Um, just for fun. Uh, nothing crazy, just, I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't have to look perfect right now. I just want to show you guys how you're going to make make an alpha in the end from this. You could use something probably better than Dame Standard for a crack, and it should be a bit more zigzaggy than this. Come out of different areas. So like I said, this isn't going to be the best crack that you've ever seen in your life. But that's okay. Then we're going to go back to uh, Trim Dynamic here. and lift it up, get some of these edges. So I'm just holding Alt and this is going to make parts of the crack disappear again. A brush that I actually really like is the uh, the mallet brush and they, they removed it from the recent versions of ZBrush, but you can still find it actually. If we go into here, into the brush palette and load brush, then we can find uh, wherever ZBrush is installed for you. So I'm going to hop into here really quickly, find Pixelogic, ZBrush, and brushes. And within here, we have Mallet and mallet fast. I like mallet fast. You can open that up and this does some cool stuff. This is always a fun one. Get some really interesting shapes and chips around your edges. If you want your crack to have thicker sections in it. And right now uh, I'm just tapping really quickly on the screen. I'm not actually holding it down, but I tap really quickly and then you get different heights and variations with the mallet fast brush. Uh, I use this one a lot for chips and different types of harsh materials, uh, concrete and asphalt and stuff like that. We're just kind of chipping away here. Well, let's go back to slash. So S3, I'll use the slash brush for a little bit. Turn down the intensity, it's a little too crazy. Just for some different looks. You kind of just mess around with all the different brushes and find one that really works for you or whatever it is that you're trying to make and 
there's basically an infinite amount of possibilities for which brush is going to work for you and which one isn't. So just try them out and see what you like. And it's kind of a mixture of going back and forth between the different brushes to end up making it look the way you want it to. Now it's just a really tiny Dame standard and that's what I'm doing with the crack. Getting these edges chipped a little bit. Across the corners here like that. See I didn't really find reference for this or pick a specific type of surface so it's not probably looking as good as it could especially if like I said I had picked a type of surface so we could really try to match something from it but it works well enough for demonstration purposes for now at least okay well anyways that's good enough for now so now if you want to make an alpha from this so that you could just basically pull this out and uh, draw it however you want on top of all these different surfaces, basically make a brush from it. All you'll do is you'll come to the standard brush. So go back into here and let's go to the standard brush. And for alpha, make sure this is centered in your screen. So we'll go ahead and select our bake plane again and press F to put it in the frame and now we're directly centered in our screen. Since this isn't tiling, it doesn't need to be perfectly in the middle. You can really lay it out or organize it however you want to, to be honest. Maybe we turn it sideways. I'm just holding shift right now to rotate it around. And so, okay, this is good. It's in the center. It's how I want it to look, you know, for purposes of this demo, at least. And we'll click on alpha and grab dock and there you go so now you have this alpha here of the crack that we just made so we'll change the brush stroke to drag and what what happens is we can very easily uh, I just changed the brush size um, this doesn't matter with the drag select I just like to know where my brush is a bit better by the radius of the brush here and um, you just click and drag it out and then it starts to drag out the crack that we have there. Now you see these harsh edges along the side here that can very easily be adjusted by going into your alpha properties up here at the top and you select modify and alpha adjust and then under alpha adjust here uh, we can change a couple different things here just to soften the edges. Um, this right here is the contrast, so here's your curves and, and you'll notice the alpha at the top starts to change and you'll lose parts of it and gain parts of it based off of how crazy this curve is. It's kind of similar to the curve in Photoshop where you can adjust the values and add contrast or remove contrast, etc. You can add noise to your alpha here. Um, adjusting the mid value is going to basically adjust the, the, the corner for you. So if we adjust that mid value and bring it up quite a bit, let me bring this up to five or so. Probably we need to go a little bit crazier, maybe something like 90. And then it starts to blend in a bit better on the sides there. Let's just bring the mid value all the way up to 100. And that's a little too far, now it's going back in. So we're almost there. We'll go mid value of 95. That's close enough. And from here, when we go back into our alpha, if we change the RF, Let's, let's bring this up to 10 or 20. 
And what this does is it softens the edges. So now you can't really see right there where the edges are. And it starts to blend in a lot better into its surroundings. So we've adjusted the mid value and the RF value. And now we can pull this crack out. <laughs> we can pull this crack out. <laughs> uh, anyways. Um, and put it on all of our surfaces however we want and get all kinds of cracks and coming across the surface there like that. Whoa, it's starting to turn into something. Check that out. Cool. So that's a great tool and you can create alphas now from this. So say you like what you've done, just go back into your alpha, grab doc again, and now you can just pull this whole thing out and you have a new alpha. And so making alphas is the quickest way to get almost anything done. Um, after that, I would say the next greatest tool is just adding in subtools. And I already have a few that I've created. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer and import a new subtool. So if I didn't duplicate the layer, it's gonna overwrite that geometry. And we don't wanna overwrite the geometry. So if I go to import now and ZBrush, I'll go to my Z tools and I made a few rocks. So let's do uh, rock shapes small 01 and it's very small so we're gonna have to increase the size of this if we go into deformation here um, and then size I have XYZ turned on so now I can just scale this up and just keep scaling it up until it's about the size that we want it to be that's not too bad uh, and also let's go ahead and move this above our sculpt plane here and make our sculpt plane visible. So now we have a rock in our scene and it's not quite centered uh, with our plane simply because that must have been where the pivot point was when I created the rock in comparison to that plane there and so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move it. Um, this will just be a second there's simpler ways to do this but the move tool in ZBrush basically just sucks you can move things a lot easier in 2D but in 3D you have the ability to rotate things around a lot better like your whole scene around and preserve things a bit better personally I feel uh, some people like to work in a, in a 2d workflow but I don't know it's just never been my thing so I usually do a lot of my sub tool placement later on in Maya which I can show you when we get started in the actual demo but this is again just for purposes of showing you some tricks in ZBrush if you haven't used it much so imagine that this is just a nice ground plane that I have and now we've added in this sub tool so we'll go ahead and just that's a good spot for it sure uh, I'll duplicate it again just move it over here rotate it move it a little more okay and now again you can make an alpha from this let's go back into draw mode here at the top and I didn't really show you how to use these move and rotate tools just because they totally suck and don't do it <laughs> if you want to do it go for it I've seen people actually become really good with this stuff and I just personally never wanted to take the time to learn it but um, I'm sure it's useful so let's go ahead and grab dock that and now we have oh whoops let me hold shift and make sure that now it's nice and flat and aligned with the screen so right now it is offset hold shift and bam it snaps to the scene again and then you can just grab dock it however you want as many times as you want 
And if you ever want to save these alphas now, just go back in and select the one that you like and click export here at the bottom and you want to save it as a PSD file. Definitely save it as a PSD file. It preserves the quality a lot better and then just get yourself a PSD viewer so when you're looking at these files in Windows you can actually see what the alpha looks like instead of just seeing a bunch of PSD logos everywhere. So you can save that out, but I don't want to save this one. And then click and drag. Oh, I have the rock subtool selected. So let me go back into the sculpting subtool and then click and drag the rocks out. Let's adjust our RF values. And I just have mine here on my quick UI menu. Our RF values, remember, are the nice soft edges and our mid value here is what's going to basically adjust you see how it's bulging here in the middle so our mid value is going to bring up the these sides to even out where that middle value is there so let's make this like 40 cuz it wasn't bulging a ton all right it didn't save so click 40 again that's a little too much it's going the opposite direction now let's put it in half at 20. That looks good. It's nice and flat and even with the surface now. And there you go. There's just a couple more tips on how to speed up your ZBrush workflow. Hope you guys enjoyed it and definitely be sure to check out the full tutorial where I'll be covering how to create snow, um, how to create a nice foresty ground with pine cone subtools, some branch subtools, some rock subtools, and then texturing all this. Uh, we're going to do some texturing actually in ZBrush. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit in Photoshop for you guys and a little bit in Substance Designer. And then once we're done with all this, I'm going to show you rendering techniques in both Marmoset Toolbag and creating your whole material setup for a terrain in the Unreal Engine. So definitely be sure to check out the full-length tutorial. I really think you guys are going to like it, and it should be a lot of fun. So thanks again, and hope to see you guys on the other side.